A nine-mile long stretch of the A30 in Cornwall will be shut this weekend, with drivers warned to expect disruption and diversions. There are a lot of road closures and diversions. So it has overall spoiled our holiday somewhat, yes. Absolute nightmare. Well, I'll do it twice a day, obviously. All the way to uh, Mitchell, but it's a joke. I think it's a good thing. There's no point in moaning about it. In the end, what it's going to do for the future of Cornwall is just... The old route. Well, whether you think the new bypass is going to be worth it or not, we need to talk about this. The only way to really start is by looking at how bypasses on the A30 have changed how we travel in Cornwall and beyond. You see, it didn't always used to be this way. For better or worse, the A30 went through towns, villages, under narrow bridges, and through narrow windy bends, like a lost taxi trying to find Land's End. And there were notoriously bad spots, such as this bend in Launceston, which when two lorries met, would hold every single British person's domestic holiday up for about three years and cause enough swearing to bring Gordon Ramsay to tears. You donkey! But this was great for local trades folk who wanted to flog an ice cream or offer them a night's rest. Y'all ready for this? Another example would be this hilariously impractical rail bridge on the old A30 on Bodmin Moor, which would cause people to consider bringing their own coffins to save time for their funerals. As whenever a lorry or other tall vehicle would realize that it's too tall to go under the bridge, it would do a U-turn, thus causing enough carnage to start a new political party. I will not tolerate such behavior. When this was bypassed, I'm sure a lot of people complained about the roadworks, but let's put it this way. Do you want them to take the Bodmin Moor bypass away after seeing this? Bet your answer is no. Furthermore, the old sections of A30 were slower, more accident prone, and full of congestion. Whoa! Congestion? Does that sound familiar? Yes, the irony doesn't escape me that roadworks on any road, in fact, do cause congestion. But I promise you now that if there wasn't roadworks on the A30 to build some of the bypasses of the past, present, and future, you would be begging for them to put those cones down and get to work. The end of the day, of course, no change comes without its negatives. And in the case of the A30, much like any major road that was built to bypass anything, many towns saw a huge decline in business after the bypass was built. Places like Victoria and Launceston were hit, but also services such as fuel stations, hotels and so on. And furthermore, bypasses have one thing set in mind when they're built. Convenience. Gone are the days of the awesome view of the sea as you come into hail from Collar Downs, or the winding roads that led us through to Camborne. And of course, there are many more examples, a lot of which I'm not even aware of because they were bypassed long ago. One business suffered substantially, that of the famous Jamaica Inn. As stated by the name, the business is an inn, and back in the days of the slow old scenic A30, would welcome weary travellers to have food, drink and sleep. One can only imagine the magic of staying in a haunted inn on the way down to West Cornwall. Of course, you can still stay there to this day. But it's on a quiet forgotten road. One which for so many years used to carry so many people. Cargo and of course, memories. I wonder if those people back then complaining holidaying to Cornwall was a slow and lengthy journey realised what they would lose once the bypass was built. Or if they complained about roadworks. Bet you they did. Bet you they did. So, how do I feel? How should we all feel? Is there a right and wrong answer to this? Well, this may surprise you, but honestly, personally, I think the new road is a great thing overall. Sure, the days of the old are gone, where it would be a dramatic drive full of friendly local businesses helping you on your travels. But let's be real here. When you're going to work or you've driven from lands afar, you're just going to want to get to where you're going. And those wonderful windy bends not only cause traffic, but accidents. Aside from this, the pollution and danger to pedestrians in towns was very much serious to a great deal of people 
As well as the road noise and thus house prices, one man even had his house value increased by £50,000 just because the latest bypass is being built. As for the old road, a lot of it is still there for you to enjoy scenically without the piles of traffic hindering your journey. Perfect for a summer drive. There is no right or wrong answer, of course. You should be able to feel however you feel. In reality, you cannot stop progress. And the economy and people's safety, as well as just plain old journey times, cannot be ignored forever, especially as traffic gets more busy. The importance of what men and women in road construction provide to the nation cannot and should not be understated. So next time you go to rant about the roadworks, remember one thing. The roads that you drive on today and in the future, roadworks like those of today, are what built them in the first place. Yeah. 